Is it possible to paint 80 zombie miniatures in less than six hours with no paintbrush? Well, we're gonna find out right here today together. The reason I even came up with this idea for not using a brush is to make the process of painting large quantities of miniatures as efficient and easy as possible. I wanted all these steps to be accessible to even new hobbyists who don't have the brush control or confidence to paint miniatures quickly and to a high level. I think this process makes it easy for even a total noob to recreate what I've done here and still be desirable to the veteran army painter for its quality to speed proposition, even if it's just for the battle line units. This isn't just good for zombies either. Any horde army like Tyranids or Orcs could use these steps to produce an attractive army quickly. The zombies that I painted today are mostly 3D printed. I wanted more of a variety of sculpts than any one company could offer, so I went with a few different companies. I'll put all the links in the description below for all the zombies that I used. I'll tell you, printing out miniatures is quite a bit easier than building plastic models. I used to love building GW models, but that might be wearing off. I'm hoping GW smartens up and decides to start releasing STLs for their models. I'm not gonna hold my breath though. I'll look worse than one of those zombies well before that happens. I'm not even using an airbrush for this one. After all, it's got brush in the name. So luckily, I got a nice day to work with rattle cans. I started off with a flat black, which I could consider the prime. Then once that dried, I moved to a darkish blue, spraying just the underside to create cold shadows. Next, I moved to a dead flesh green color, using it as a zenithal highlight, about 45 degree angles in the front and back, and then over the top. For the final step, I used a light gray, just from directly above to try and highlight the head and shoulders of the models. I think this gave an interesting array of zombie colors and looked pretty good. This is where I'm gonna get all weird on you and pull out an idea that I haven't seen yet. Army Painter revolutionized shading miniatures quickly with their quick shade dipping jars. And I got to thinking, hmm, why couldn't I do the same thing with oils. Check out the big brain on bread. Would this crazy idea work? Well, let's try it. I keep a ball jar full of white mineral spirits to clean brushes after painting with oils. I think I've been using the same jar of spirits for almost two years. So don't feel like you have to use fresh spirits every time. The actual paint tends to settle to the bottom in short order. I just added a bunch of burnt umber oils into a small plastic cup. Then I poured the top of my cleaning spirits into the cup and mixed it well. And voila, my very own dipping shade. I prepared a box with paper towels ahead of time for a place to put the models after dipping. I use a box that holds cases of soda. I keep a bunch of these around for moving around a large number of models or printed parts. I may drink too much vodka and ginger ale. Once this process was finished, I let the oils dry overnight. I didn't even bother to clean any off. Next it was time to work on the metallics. For this, I went with the sponge method. We don't want the metallics looking too clean, so I used a pair of hemostats and torn pieces of sponge and dabbed the metallic paint on the metal parts of the model. Any dark metal paint will do. Okay, we're getting towards the end and it was time to add some extra color on the models. And once again, I turned to oils. I pulled out a plastic palette, put some aluminum foil around it, and created a bunch of different colored washes. These were thicker this time. In this stage, the purpose is to tint the clothing, hair, wood, and add some variety to the skin. I did end up using a brush for this part. I couldn't think of an easier way. Slapping oils on a model is far from a difficult process though. I wanted this all to be quick and easy. I did this step in batches of 20 at a time. I didn't want the oils to be on too long, seeing I'd be going in with makeup sponges and Q-tips to wipe some of the upper areas off. As I went on in the process, I ended up wiping less and less oil off just in the areas that collected too heavily. Looking pretty good. The only thing missing now is the gore. Zombies need blood, and lots of it. There are a bunch of different ways to add blood effects. You can use blood for the blood god if you want, but I went with oils again. I mixed Abitulung coagulated blood and black to darken it up into a thickish paint, then used a brush to dab it in areas that I thought blood would collect, like the hands, weapons, and faces. Once that was dry, I then came in with Tamiya Clear Red to add more of a fresh looking blood. And that's the process. It took me about six hours to do 80 models. And I really don't think that painting 160 zombies would take me 12 hours it would probably be in the eight to 10 hour region. All the steps I used were very quick per zombie and then none of them took any real skill to accomplish, especially seeing I barely used the brush. It was only to dab some oils on and of course the base rims. Believe it or not, painting those base rims probably took most amount of time, clocking in at around 40 minutes. Hey, I hope you like them. I love zombies and I think they came out pretty cool.
Thanks for sticking around. Please like and comment so YouTube pushes this video to other people so they can see it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. If you want to support my channel even more, watch another video. This is what YouTube, uh, this is what YouTube recommends. Thanks.